This is a very sad one for me, folks. I really hate to say it, and I know I'll get the people who always tell me, I quit watching sports years ago and I don't miss it, saying I told you so. But hear me out, because in the current state that it's in, sports is dead. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on Out of Left Field for MRC TV, I'm Nick Kangadis. I honestly believe that professional and college sports as we knew them are forever gone. And the people who keep telling me that they haven't watched sports in a while, good for you, more power to you. But those people need to understand that it's difficult for someone that their entire life watched all sports because they genuinely love the competition. You need to understand that for someone who actually played baseball on multiple levels, basketball, football, was on the swim team, was on the golf team, played street hockey, took tennis lessons, played youth soccer, is a 200 average bowler, played beach volleyball, and even used to throw the shot put around, shutting out sports after years of being a fan and a participant is really difficult. I loved it. I genuinely loved competing. Heck, I still do. That being said, in the last six months or so, I find it increasingly difficult to continue to put any level of effort into watching the current product that professional sports leagues have been putting out there. This pandemic or whatever we want to call it this week, along with the Marxist-led unrest gripping our country right now, has revealed that the athletes of today, who have more advantages than any athletes that came before them, are a bunch of pansies. There are exceptions, but the leagues of all sports are filled with these prima donnas who think that because they have the platform they do, that we want to fill our time listening to their bullshit. Now look, they're entitled to their right to free speech. I'm not taking that away from them. But when I watch a game, I don't want to hear some political message. As an adult, I watched games because it was an escape from the constant blathering of politicians or the self-righteous jibber-jabber that we typically hear from the Hollywood communistic cult. The leagues just don't want that to be possible anymore. In the NBA, they're weighing whether or not to allow players to wear social justice messages on their jerseys. They're going to paint Black Lives Matter on the courts if and when the league restarts its season. The NFL basically has a social justice committee headed by rapper Jay-Z, part of which pledges $100 million for criminal justice reform. Are these football players or politicians? Major League Baseball now has a diversity and inclusion section on their website dedicated to telling all of us how we can understand racism and social justice. A subsection of the website preaches to you about how you can be an ally, because if you're not, you're part of the problem. The National Hockey League, which admittedly has very few black players or people in positions of power, has created a new hockey diversity alliance. The only thing is that the lack of diversity in the NHL isn't because the sport is racist somehow, but because you can't fill positions with people of color if there aren't enough pro-level minority players. The same goes for the underrepresentation of white basketball players. If there were more pro-level white players, they might be better represented on the basketball court. Now, I know that might be controversial to say, but if it's perfectly okay to say that black players are underrepresented in sports like baseball and hockey, then it's perfectly okay to say that white players are underrepresented in a sport like basketball. I'll get some people that will tell me that's why they watch college sports, because the kids do it for the love of the game. Well, not anymore. Players on the Kansas State University football team are saying that they won't play unless a student who has nothing to do with the school's football program, by the way, is expelled for making a joke about George Floyd in a social media post. Ooh, mean words in a social media post. When did these kids become so soft? They're willing to violate their scholarships, which the school most likely and cowardly won't hold them to, in order to see a person's life ruined over a joke that was in poor taste, admittedly. Some of these kids signed a contract that allowed them to go to a major university for free simply for playing a game. But they can't be bothered to fulfill their commitment because of a social media post that they felt was offensive. 
I can't even play a game of Madden football on PlayStation anymore without first being greeted by a screen telling me that Black Lives Matter. That's right. Black Lives Matter, a phrase that I agree with in sentiment, but vehemently disagree with organizationally. Any organization who bashes the nuclear family and whose founders are trained Marxist, their words, not mine, gets a big F you from me. And if you don't like that stance, I really don't care. It's fair. Even sports highlight programs are a hassle now, as we've all seen over the past few years with ESPN's Woke Center. But I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole again, at least not right now. Sports has had activists in them in one form or another for decades, including the likes of Muhammad Ali and Lou Kareem Abdul-Jabbar al Cinder. But sports always managed to separate activism from the games, and that's just not the case anymore. I've gotta tell you, I don't know how many more editions of Out of Left Field I have left in me, considering that even in the sports world now, no news is good news. The real problem is politics. Politics are a poison on our society. Think about it. Once politicians realized that people were sick of listening to their empty words, they injected politics into the media. Once they realized that people generally didn't trust the media anymore, they injected politics into Hollywood. Once they realized that people generally thought celebrities weren't genuine in their messages, they injected the poison of politics into sports. Sports is merely the patient, and they are suffering and basically dead because of the virus that is politics. Sports are no longer an outlet for people to escape from their everyday problems. And that's why people are increasingly done with sports because they can no longer come home from work, turn on a game of the sport of their choosing and forget about life's troubles for a while. It's a shame, but sports as we used to know them and love them are dead. What do you think? Let me know in the comments whether I'm way off base or not. I'd like to hear your stories, and I do read most of your comments. And if you have a second, head on over to Parlay and follow both my page and MRC TV's page. The link will be in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to share it and give it a thumbs up. Those are the two best ways to let us know that you want us to keep these videos coming. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that YouTube might actually let you know that our videos exist. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kingadis.